All right, good afternoon, everyone. Today is March 8th, 2012. It's Thursday, March 8th, 2012. Um, I want to encourage everyone who has not taken a trial at CFRN.net to go to www.cfrn.net forward slash apply. That's A-P-P-L-Y. And sign up for the free trial if you haven't taken one. If you have taken one, um, and you have any questions about maybe taking a second one or um, you know, becoming a partner, uh, or becoming part of the mentorship partner program that we have. Um, send an email to support at cfrn.net, and we'll get back to you with any details you ask. All right. Um, that said, we have a partners meeting tonight for everyone who is out there who is a partner. Partners meeting tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Um, we have some things that we're going to be going over with regard to the Russell, the YM, and the 6E tonight. Um, in particular those markets, and anything else anybody has that they bring to the table tonight, we'll be happy to discuss. Um, <clears throat> the morning session, I'll go over all the stuff that we did in the morning session here. All right, let's start right over here. This is the Russell. All right, I didn't take any trades on the ES. They just didn't set up again this morning. You know, even this last move up here, we never got to pull back down to the BBC. So they just didn't set up this morning on the ES for me. Um, there was one opportunity that Dwayne had pointed out on the 10K, right here on the 10,000 contract chart. When we had a bullish cross here, it pulled back down, and it was going right into the uh, right into the resistance dots there. So I didn't take that trade, though it did move up nicely. Okay. Um, let's start out with the results. I didn't take any trades in the live trading room this morning, but Dwayne did, and you can see this is his YM DOM right here, um, the YM H2 depth of market. He's got 14 points he made on the YM this morning. All right. I didn't have... I took... Uh, the trade that I took was a Russell trade, and I got a break even on it. Um, now, I was pointing out a bunch of different things, and I'm going to go through them one at a time. All right. I just started to go through the ES. Um, I wanted to get the results in the recording right away. Um, so we can... Uh, anybody that's just looking for the results can see them quickly when they view the recording later, or the recap later. Um, I believe Dwayne took this long trade right here after the bullish cross. It came back down, hit the BBC, and moved up. All right. I marked it, but I didn't take it. Um, that was pretty near it on the YM. We had the initial short trade was right in here when it was in this chop, and I wasn't trading this morning. The first, I don't know, the first half an hour about was really choppy, and we didn't take any trades in that first half an hour. Um, the market pulled down here just a little bit, pulled away, met the rules, the requirement right there, so the actual entry would have been right there on that pullback. Um, it pulled back again down here going into the weekly trading zone. I did not take that one. I saw it happening, but I didn't take it because it was going into the zone. Um, it turned around off the zone. We had a bullish cross and a pullback down to the BBC for the move up right there. Okay. Now, I like to take just the first pullback myself. Some folks like to do more than one pullback, and that's fine if you like to do that. Um, there's, you know, there's a number of different ways that you can trade these things. We just give you a starting path, and if you like that starting path, you can stick to it. If you find something else that suits you better, of course, you can go and do that as well. All right. Um, so that's pretty much the ES and the YM on the morning. And now I'm going to jump over here to the Russell. What we were looking at this morning... Um, these are some trades that happened this morning. I didn't actually take these trades. Um, the first one was right here with divergence. You see we had all this divergence down here, the close down below the MA1 right here. That was a nice move down. We had I tried to take that trade, but I didn't get filled. I got my order on too late. We had a partner that got into that trade early, and actually it was this trade over here. It was 90, 96. It was this, this one over here that he got into. I tried to get into this short right here, and I didn't get filled. He got into it right here and took six ticks on it when it pulled back over here. Um, anyway, what we're looking for here was the divergence and the roll down, right down here on the bottom, divergence and the roll down. Get in on the close of the bar after the roll down. Um, we had a hiccup in here. This is one of the little hiccup trades. On that, you just look for the down close um, over here. We had the same divergence type setup. The entry would have been right in there. Okay, um, price moved around quite a bit. 
Here was a long trade. This was the buying pressure or hiccup, we call it. Um, and I took this long right here. It went up a little bit in our favor, then it came back down, and I moved my stop to break even right here. Okay, once we started closing below the MA1, price moved against us a little bit. It would have come within a tick of stopping me out right here um, had I stayed in the trade. Then it took off, and right here you can see we had the same kind of divergence on the Russell. And I didn't take this because it was going into a zone, but I know I did. You know, we do have some partners in the room that took this trade this morning. We pointed it out, but I don't trade into the zones no matter no matter what. All right. Um, in the break period, we had all this sideways action in here where nothing was going on. And we right now have opposing divergences on these two <laughs> on these two things right here. Okay. Um, so it's probably a good time to not do anything at you know at the moment. All right. Um, it's possible that if we get a if we get a nice move up here and it closes above the MA1, that could be a good possible good long trade right there. Okay. So that was that. Now the 6E, I'll go over the 6E a little bit. Um, let's see what time is it? 12:28. All right, in the live trading room this morning when the market was over here, I had drawn in these trend lines. Uh, once This is the five tick range on the 6E. Once we broke out of those trend lines, you can see we moved up pretty strong right there, pretty pretty quick. And you, know, you can draw another trend line right now. Um, another set of trend lines, I should say, right here. Um, now, what this... Oops, that wasn't a great line. What this is suggesting is that we are... If we drop down below here, it's probably going to keep going down. Um, now, it was odd today. When when everything was happening this morning, when we got the majority of the movement this morning on all the markets, the 6E is what led. And it started off with the 6E being the thing that was the most congested. If you look at from right here at the open, it was up and down and up and down and up and down. And the BBC was in the box the whole morning. And for the partners knowing what the BBC is in the box is, I'm going to get into more detail about that tonight. All right. But then the 6E was the first one to get out of it and the first one to move. And move it did. It made a very nice move with the white to the left of the green. Um, we had a nice move up right there. White to the left of the green, a nice move down. Um, the green was to the left of the white here, so it wasn't a great move. Same thing here. It wasn't looking so great. Same thing here on the upside. Finally, over here, the white was to the left of the green again, but it still didn't go very far. Um, and right now, it's gotten back into a really choppy period. Okay. Um, but one thing worth noting was when it broke out of this triangle that I had drawn in here this morning, this little pennant thing, um, when it broke out of that, it really went. And that was right over here. So at that time, we had suggested at that time that uh, 3236... Um, right in here with the break of the elbow right here given the position of the white to the left of the green um, a bounce off the BBC here was likely and it made a nice bounce as it broke through that level right there now we've had some people that have been requesting information about the FTSE um, the FTSE 100 now here it is this is the FTSE these, this was the first trade that I had mentioned this morning. Um, at the time, it was 58.42 half, I believe, is what I had, is what I had suggested. 58.42 half um, for an entry. Maybe it was 58.41 half. No, 58.42 half. I think that was the first one that I had recommended this morning. But I went over these trades. I hadn't recommended these trades because they happened before I even looked at the FTSE. Um, but I did recommend this one when it was happening all right and price moved up pretty strongly off of that then it gave oh this was the first one sorry this was the first one 5852 half or 5853 half anyway right in here i remember the half being part of it it was either 52 half or 53 half but right in here and price moved up off it then it came back down and bounced off the bbc again right there and since then it's turned around and given a couple of opportunities on the downside bouncing off the bbc um, you know, that was right into our break period right here. This was the last one. Now with the FTSE, the, the margin on the FTSE is, is quite a bit, not, 
not too excessive. I think it's like 1500 bucks or something like that. But um, <clears throat> the per tick value, I believe it's a little over $7 per tick is what the FTSE pays just for everybody that's interested in it. Um, for those of you folks who like to trade pre-market, this may be a market that you would consider. And I will show you why. Um, let me throw the volume on there. This is a five-minute chart, and you can see it comes to life here at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. All right. It has spikes in volume. The volume is pretty low in here, but it does have spikes in volume around 4 a.m., then 5, and then again when our markets open up over here at 9.30. You know, the volume starts to increase. All right. And it stays, <coughs> the volume spikes, and then it stays up till about right now. Um, and it just drops right off, and you can go back and look at that over and over on the uh, on the um, various charts. Okay, the all the prior days. Now let me flip this back. This is a 233 contract. Okay, not to be confused with a 233 tick. Um, let me remove that. All right. Now there is one other thing I want to remind everyone about, and I will show you how to do it in here. Uh, today is the first day the new contract becomes available for everyone that's trading the March contract. The the June contract becomes available now, um, the M. So using DT Pro, to move forward, you can go to View, Roll Forward. That's going to roll it. You see the ESM2? It's going to roll the contract forward. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to just click on the chart anywhere and type in ESM2, all right, like that. All right, now that's that's only one piece of the uh, one piece of the equation, right? Because if you're going to be rolling your chart forward, then you want to make sure your DOM is also getting rolled forward, all right. So if I click that, it's not going to let me bring up my DOM. But if I bring up my DOM over here, okay, here is my DOM. You see, it says ESH2 on it. You have to close your DOM, just close it. All right. Roll your chart forward. So your chart is ESM2. Then bring your DOM back up and your DOM will be ESM2. Okay? You guys see that? Um just do that and you'll be trading the correct symbol on the correct chart when you roll it forward. All right. We're probably going to roll it forward tomorrow. Um depends on what the volume looks like, but for right now, we're going to stick with the uh, we're going to stick with the H. Okay, and you see, I just did it again. My ESH2 matches my ESH2 chart. All right. Um, lastly, partners meeting tonight. Um, for anybody that's a partner, um, if you have any questions or anything like that, anything you want me to discuss prior to the meeting, um, you know, email them to me prior to the meeting, if you want and we'll discuss them. I'll put it on my list. Um, for anybody that's not a partner, anybody that is in here on their trial, who is interested in going to the meetings, the meetings are usually very good. Sometimes they're pretty long. The last bunch of them actually have been pretty long. Um, you know, two and a half, three hours for the last couple of months, it seems like. But it, they're packed with information. Lots and lots of information. All right, so... If you're on the fence, become a partner by tonight, and you can be in the meeting tonight. Um, if you have any questions about how to become a partner and you and you need more information, send me an email at support at cfrn.net. That's support at cfrn.net, and I will get back to you as quickly as possible. You can also call me. Um, my phone number, well, <laughs> my phone number is in the email that I sent to everyone. All right, so you all have my phone number you can call me directly. All right. Um, that said, I'm going to stop the recording here and...